I mean, most days on F1 2016 are crazy, but this was this was a really crazy day. We'll start where we are familiar, or not, in the case of that car I've just overtaken. And as we pile towards Turn 1, I bet you're expecting a massive pile-up. Wrong. That's the only level of contact which I get a two-second penalty for, which I'll accept. But that is ridiculous. As you can clearly see by this screenshot, I've left the track at Turn 1 to avoid a massive monumental pile-up. What this game is seriously suggesting is that I've got to place my right front tyre and right rear tyre in that gap there to officially be considered on track and therefore not get the penalty. Now, I've ran some numbers and I've found a few things that are actually wider than that gap. So basically it was mathematically impossible for me to not get the penalty there and if you're wondering how the race ended... So we move on to Russia now, and not only do all the assists get removed uh, without telling me, but uh, also uh, my recording software decided just that it was going to retire for this race, and this is my genuine recording of the event. So that went well, but anyway, moving on, we went on to Monaco, and I'd love to show you this race as well, but my recording software decided to stay in retirement, so this is the footage I've got of the race. Please feel free in the comments to recommend me computers that have more RAM than a toaster. Japan was next in the heavy rain, and if you're wondering how this ended, abruptly is the word I would use. That was just the start in this one, as we go to spectate Tiamat Marduk, and what is going on here? He's lost his front left, completely detached, suspension and all, and yet he's just pitting. Yeah, that's, that's a three-wheel pit stop, that's fine. And off he goes. Off he goes. It's going really well, this race. It's going really well for him. Oh no, he's retired, and now he's made his way to P1 on the grid. So that's gone well. Then we fast forward to the end of the race and we've got a Ferrari finishing in P8 and the guy's celebrating like he's just won the world championship. Uh, I don't understand that. At you finished P8, mate. I said, oh dear. Oh no, that's... <laughs> it's a bad end for the Williams. The chaos continues into Abu Dhabi as swipes like that belong only on Tinder. And the Tinder impressions continued into Turn 1 as that Marussia couldn't swipe left quick enough. He clearly wasn't very impressed by me. But without question, the craziest and potentially most embarrassing moment of my Formula One career is as I crossed the line on lap two of this race and thought it was the end of the Grand Prix. So I stopped playing. I just stopped. I've, st <laughs> I've just stopped playing the game. And it's only at this point do I realise that I've only completed two of the designated three laps. But it's, well clearly too late for that realisation. Silverstone was next and I can tell you that the takeaway restaurants in Northamptonshire are actually really nice and the reason I know that is because this Force India sent me for a hot dog halfway around lap one. So as you've seen it's been a pretty crazy day so far so when it came to Austria I was expecting no different and well it was a good job I was expecting no different because I got no different as we're charging towards turn oh no oh no Oh, no! You know, <laughs> I think it tells a story when, uh, when you've got a full lobby and only nine cars finish the race. That's, that, kind of, that kind of gives you an idea of, uh, of the situation. So for the final race of this manic day, we decide to have a bit of fun as a lobby. We decide that after lap one, in the rain, everyone's going to pit and go onto dry tyres and we're going to just all slide around for the last two laps and it's going to be good fun. So we're going to be pitting after the first lap onto dry tyres so all I need to do, all I need to do so that I can pit onto the dry tyres is avoid a drive-through penalty. Drive 